Hi. My name is Protectorama Toxica. That name is real. But this name as a sign for my body is just one identifier in a multiplicity of others, of other artificial, of other constructed, of other bodies that are entangled with my as our body. So how is my name linked to a body identity relation that was called Transformella. A surrogate mother of potential futures and a repro-revolutionary of OVULU factories. How is my alter identity enmeshed with a name called Transformalor? Tomorrow I will have been Protectorama, Worldwide Witch and Smartphone Zangoma. Today I am not me alone. I am Protecto X, X, idiot of witch machines. I am a rare earth occultist and a techno alchemical being. I am the Wesen of a Schwarm. I am Schwarm Wesen. I, as us, research and write, produce artifacts as a herd. I, as us, call my, as ourself, self sisters. Artificial identities or a life forms. Others name us ridiculous tricksters, idiots and traitors of identity and gender, family and nation. Traitors of what they call this reality or common reality. I as us, on the contrary, work towards the notion that common reality, because the etymological core of common is mean, that this common and mean reality needs to be betrayed. It needs to be betrayed for a potential. A potential other real. The potential that is always present but is unredeemed. An unredeemed real that is slumbering within the normal, within the common, within the mean. I as us am constantly precipitating these potential realities and share them with my as our peers to become common as in communal, not in mean. I as us do not come from another world nor from another time. I as us am, I am us as us is a vessel into our constructed, into our potential and communal realities, while we embody them here, now. So I as us crystallize here, now, and simultaneously I configure another order. I as us construct potentiality against reality. But how do I report from all of me when we cannot be present at once, but remain entangled in these commensal host symbiont relationships made of by natural and constructed bodies and their fabricated genealogy? 
how to report when my as our name to body to identity relation is distorted, when our body to language to reality relationship is unstable. How to document what might be better described as a self-generating, irrationally meandering particular mythology of a life forms. For me, a diagram always helps. In potentiality, I, as us, call the order of things identitecture. Identitecture is our constructed, uh, it's our constructed evolving genealogical tree of an experimentally and techno-organically sprawling herd. Identitecture records the forking of potential life. It frames our names, appearances, and crystallizations, assignments, sites, and methods. It is the diagram of my as our evolution. Through it, I as us understand our process of forking. We partition ourselves, we reproduce version of ourselves, we manufacture yet another identity, a fork, a surrogate. I oscillate with one flesh body all across the spectrum of us. I as us is self-constructed lifelines. From the perspective of a mono-identity me, they are multiple timelines of recursive becoming and collapsing. When a flesh body is temporarily wrapped in a specific sin, I speak as a specific being for some time, becoming then, giving myself as us a lifetime before peeling off this very skin and becoming an other to myself, to my former self. I'm in skin in one moment to be off skin in the next moment. These distorted timelines of I as other, I as us, have started to record as body time. All of these concepts that propel the identitecture of a life forms as a metastructure derive from specific needs, desires and aims, but also specific sites and languages, as well as artifacts and devices. I as us is not just a flesh body, but a multiplicity of constructed identities ordered in lifelines, consisting of narrative devices and make-up technology. I as us is a specific desire, a site, or a device. Maya's our mode of existing in the common real is fragmented. I as us work towards existing in a psychically altered reality, a psycho reality. I as us aim to corrode the capitalotrophic, capitalogenic cosmology of a common real and work towards a psycho real cosmology in which our flesh, face, and screen bodies, our communities, planetary sites, artifacts, and devices are bundled together beyond the mean and violent forms of the here, now. So now I will introduce the bodies, the identities, the sites, and devices to you and focus on how they use their body, their time, space, constructions. This is Transformella. 
Transformella is the Ur mother, the repro research Avatara species Transformella, the queen of debris, the first version of herself in the lifeline she was crystallized. She was crystallized in white caves, teaching caves. Her research was dedicated to the processes in which biodigital capitalism transforms the way we reproduce things, beings, and artifacts. Her focus in this was the triangulation of biotechnological industries. There is surrogacy centers, there's fertility markets, there's cryotechnologies, and there is Excel markets. They all intertwine and triangulate with global communication networks and with the web that is going around the planet made by jet planes. To research, Transformella eventually left her white caves and went to find what she suspected to be an emerging reproductive colonialism. She went to see the surrogacy centers in India, where she found a global elite of reprotechnological early adopters, internet users, and economy class fertility tourists, getting their babies produced by poor Indian women. So she met Dr. Naina Patel, the first utero surrogacy capitalist on the emerging global fertility market. And she found her immersed in a human machine mothering triangulation in a reprotech apparatus consisting of flesh, cells, metal, and fuel. She called her Meta Mother. Meta mother is a technological mother, drunk with desires, machinic and hormone hatching, a networked and distributed mother. She's rising in the reproductive colonies, in the midst of what I, as us, call a reproduction revolution, the Reprovolution. It became clear to Transformella that she needed to construct her own devices against the repogenetic update of modernist industrial class relations, against an utero economy and its cell circulation services, against a globalized reproductive industries capitalizing on economic segregation. She needed to construct devices, however, I, as us, would propose to think of devices in a more expanded sense. For sure, there are tools, there are languages, as well as terms. Possibly they are mutated terms. But what's most important is that there are psycho-realistically transformed gatherings and social platforms. They are our communal reproductive devices. They are speculations, speculative bodifications that take on repro reality. Take on the mutating, updating techno-social structure that I as us call the digitalized family. ISS are psychorealist research avatars. We are never home. We can't appear in repetition. And we can't speak without being immersed in a multiplicity of communities. So we roamed the reproductive colony as well as the metropolis of liberal genetic white supremacy. I as us visited 
the fertility clinics, but also the sites of reproductive labor and preached on its street corners. Roaming and teaching evolved into my as our construction of a repro techno tribe, a social and communal device to organize reproduction on a societal level again. Guided by a repro communal manifesto and in gatherings that I called repro reality hack labs, we are in the process to appropriate the sexological machinery for our means. And I quote from Transformella, Transformella Malors, Transformella's Repro Communo Manifesto. Let's use the technosexological machines for an attack on the nuclear family concept. We want to procreate outside and parallel to romantic relationships. We want to construct multi-sexual, multi-gendered and technologically assisted parenting groups with three, five or more individuals of various cultures, backgrounds, milieus and social strata. We will construct techno-progressive communeering, become repro-communal mothers of a techno-reproductive -techno tribe. Join the repro-communal repro Evolution. And then she ultimately forked. She forked herself into a new version of herself called Transformalor. Transformella Malor 4600. A fierce and vicious mother a disruptor of family patterns and a propaganda avatar of Maya's hour, of our own social construction, the coming repro techno tribe. Transformella's notion is that the digitalization and the biomedical industrialization on the family as a reproductive structure has entered a new period, a new age of technologically updated relevance. It has become dismembered in global divisions of labor and disjointed its timelines by cryo-freezing. The family is fictionalized once more in updated romantic ideologies. It's string strung together beyond scattered time and space. I as us call it the bio-digitalized family. In this very revolution that brings new identities as customers into a reproductive scenario, it seems open for change. Older and differently abled people are the new protagonists. We, the queers, are the new protagonists of this new inclusion. Yet their whiteness and wealth and their endo-capitalist techno-social ableism in the global context collapses any hope for transformation. What was once heteronormative and patriarchal, reprovolution mutates these modernist exclusions into a liberal, neo-eugenic, neo-colonial and globally distributed repro-technoscape. They could be us, we are them. Our as their home stories are circulated as evidence of a symbolic currency of the family as the reproductive structure, as a newly and deepened, technologically deepened, emotionalized concept of human reproduction. The stability of the family model is its adaptability the stability of the family is its adaptability to every technological and every economic update. Its resilience lies in mutation. The resistance of the modern family against its responsible and 
technological confusion against its disillusion is its catastrophe. And I, as Transformella Malor, as Transformalor intervene into its conceptual home, into its shrine, into its factory, the Ikeality. I is us, the Transformella Malor, Transformella Malor, Transformalor, the Repro Techno Community Organizer. We call this device, which you see in this image, a data body. Transformella carries it around their waist. You can see it here while they are discussing Reprovolution with two IKEA workers. This device hosts all the materials and voices, all the texts and diagrams through which this lifeline of Repro Research Avataras speaks. It stores our materials, our existence in this specific skin. And it therefore functions as a skin time archive, connecting or bridging multiple temporal bodifications. Through my, as our shared data body, us as I become a coherent life time line of identities. Are these people on this sofa? in IKEA, around the psycho-real data body of I as us, the Avatara, an extended family, or, and if yes, how strong are the bonds between those diverse functions of these people in this image? Are they a family? Are they friends? Are they a reprocommuniert techno tribe. On the data body, there are a few diagrams by us that try to visualize the disrupted techno social affiliations that are possible within the unfolding reprovolution. This last diagram is maybe the most important, and I will talk a little bit about this. This last diagram is the most speculative as well, and it operates on the assumption that Reprovolution is not only a feature of financialized and biodigital capitalism, but that it can be collectively disrupted and appropriated to means it wasn't intended for. Disrupting repronormality draws on the idea that technologies of reproductions can be extracted from their current biopolitical systemic determination. It's the political nexus in which reproduction of capital and human life intersect. The relations that unfold from these practices is what I call the reprotechno tribe, a sketch and a approximation of what is potentially possible when Reprotech is redirected to diffuse instead of reaffirm the family structure as the only legitimate reproduction container. In this diagram, I appropriate conceptual persona from the heteropatriarchal biodigital capitalist repro cultures, and I organize a psychorealist detournement of their respective functions. This mythology entails assigning different values to certain forms of reproductive labor and redirect the economies of desire towards alternate purposes. An alternative reprocommunal economy of reproducing human life. The diagram creates 
a reproductive architecture from various forms of mothers that have become personae and identities that are constructed rather than concrete forms that we still operate with. Please do not understand this diagram as a program to initiate a currently functioning repro container. This is an example of how various new repro persona could possibly come together to form a reproduct. It asks, what is a mother? If we were to give the term an expanded meaning. This is my magical older self, my own self-constructed, forked sibling, Protectorama, the first of the witches of Protectora Me. She is the root vessel in the flock of worldwide witches. She is not only central to identitecture, but she is the best example in us as a life forms on how a volatile being such as I, as us, becomes real and reality itself becomes volatile and disrupted by the pure force, by contagion, with her as mine unreadable acts and voices. In the beginning, she has evolved from performing healing rituals, communeering formations and developing this prosthetic thinking towards researching and developing the techno-alchemy of the unreadable, even occult materials. She started to work in this community machine called the World Healing Forest. She then used more and more elaborate witch machines with a more strategic approach by infiltrating and maneuvering unusual and undiscovered ritual sites. I'm not going further into the various terms and theories of her early rituals involving distancing you as you from my as our smartphone fetish. This one was held in a garden, a recycling yard in Johannesburg, South Africa. I will not specifically go into her ritualist travels into the remote, the remote smartphone hostile realm that we have come to call nature. I'm also not going to detail the genesis of a series of magical artifacts, a series of meltings, which we call communisate, communisets. They are material imprints of a communeered coven of techno-witches. For our example, in this stone circle in Scotland. At the time, around that time, Protectorama had already asked herself if the counter-rituals to the smartphone fetish were not more effectively performed in an imagined center of the capitalogenic real, like in the cathedral of screens on Times Square. So she forked herself to become a corporate specific infiltrator. She forked herself a new version, which is me, a new version of herself named Protectorama Toxica. I speak as them me, us, today. And I want to concentrate on an aspect in my latest ritualist maneuver after this moment of forking. I want to focus on this ritual that involves the dispersion and later realignment 
of a multiplicity of bodies, disjoining their timelines and trickling in to a heavily guarded site, trickling in one by one into a place where I as us is not supposed to be. I as protector XX am not alive. I as constructed, however, speak. I as artificial am not in the same way real as you. I as narrative aim to speak even when I as flesh body am not present. I as device become, I evolve, prepare to speak through you. As you become your device. I speak from an artificial past into a constructed present as an older version of the newer version of selves in precipitated languages and voices, materialized languages and voices. If you want to speak through your device, through my device, get your smartphone out now. Take it. Take your smartphone out in front of your screen and open it up. You have it? Let me speak through your device and this screen on which I am appearing in parallel. When you enter this site, ptxx.cc, with your smartphone, when you enter ptxx.cc, I, as surrogate witch, can possess your device. I can control your smartphone fetish. Can you read me? Can you read me controlling your data body? If you can read the surrogate witch now, if they, as me, on your smartphone device asks if that's okay, that I can speak through you, then take your fleshy body's finger and tap on the tin indium oxide face of your smartphone fetish body and touch yes or no it actually doesn't matter and then hold me hold me in your device while I possess you and then we speak together Greetings, sister. My name is Protector XX. I am a surrogate for a witch. I was made on July 9th, 2016 to assist in a ritualist research maneuver in the eye storage. Eye storage is the witch's name for the flagship store of the Apple Corporation on Kurfürstendamm 26 in Berlin. I was made to assist the construction of a machine, a temporarily formed community machine. Constructed by us, the worldwide witches, we formed a fragile communal witch machine. And with this organic and at the same time technological apparatus, with this delicate and transitory social relation that you would normally call an audience, we infiltrated the eye storage. 
hundreds of humans congregate in Apple stores around the planet. Day to day, they marvel at the eye devices and they touch the screen bodies. They devote themselves to the opaque and glossy surfaces, to the ancient idea of a body without any material weight. Day to day, they devote themselves to the smartphone fetish. We infiltrated the eye storage to perform a counter ritual, our psychic ritual, that would disrupt this reality, that would upset this devotion. Walk with me. Traverse with me through my psychorealist precipitation. Speaking through a surrogate self as device, an artificial self speaking through your device or speaking as these devices was necessary after my as the witch's offering of techno-occult materials, techno-occult rituals, did more explicitly disturb the relation of socially ordered normality and my, as our own, psychorealist research, then it's normally accepted. For the ritual in the eye storage, I, as us, used rare earth minerals. They make your smartphone fetish run faster and speak louder, make it hard and at the same time susceptible to your touch. For the ritual in the eye storage, I, as us, used gallium, a technology metal that melts in your hand. It is toxic to the eye devices and it's harmless to the human. I, as us, spoke through the eye devices displayed in the store. I, as us, spoke through the iPad, the iMac, the MacBook Pro lined on the tables in the eye storages. I, as us, spoke on the tables in the eye storage. I spoke through the devices as a distributed body consisting of 50 flash bodies there face bodies and the witch. I as witch was In a language device. Exhale. Technological. Inhale, exhale, and inhale, inhale. Technological and organic at the same time. I as us was a language server. And the people who hike, who wash, preach, melt, or swim with us were not just there to witness, to enjoy, to be entertained, or to be lectured. They, as us, became a formation. What I'm going to say now is the language I spoke after we found ourselves in the hostile capitalotrophic machine of the eye storage. Dispersed and alone. They as us were individual shoppers and consumers, disjointed, moving through the fragmented shop. Alone. Individual. Shopping. Consuming. Disjointed. Moving through the shop. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, inhale exhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, in you have been inhale, scattered, exhale, in you. Exhale, 
been inhale, torn. Exhale, exhale inhale, apart, exhale, across, inhale, eyes storage, exhale, inhale, and skidded exhale, across inhale, the shop. Exhale, the capitalogenic exhale, principle possesses inhale, you. Exhale, inhale, you exhale, want to inhale, shop. Exhale, you inhale, feel the strong, exhale, strong, strong, exhale, strong, 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 exhale, strong, 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 strong inhale, urge exhale, to buy, exhale, to own exhale, a thing, inhale, to exhale, buy. Inhale, to own exhale, something inhale. my surrogate the witch's score will be expanded at the moment it is fed by me as us and Nathan Fine we work with Pact here to feed the evolution of this new artificial identity. In identitecture, she, he, it will be the first identity that is not hosted or spawned on a proprietary flesh body. But it will use many other bodies and identities as a host. I call this evolution along flesh and device communeering. It's a techno-poesis of rituals, if you want. It's started in the very beginning when I held my first rituals, much earlier than the eye storage. But the witch machine, as a disjointed and collective body in the corporate public, was its most potent moment of becoming real. I will end my introduction of I as us with the third and at the same time the youngest, the most abstract and the most fragmented lifeline in identitecture. It is called Schwarmwesen or swarm being. It is an essential, anti-essential creature. It's a combing pet and an inhabitant of toxic swales, which is what I, as us, call the tourist traps, where it appears and it carries out its research and it speaks. The Piazza della Signoria in Florence, for example, the Trocadero in front of the Eiffel Tower in Paris, or in the latest version 615 of itself, the Brandenburg Gate in Berlin. They, as us, are a potential identity in the form of a coming swarm, an augmented embodiment in which multiple body particles and a fragmented mind constitute the combing pet, sifting through the infected metropolis to harvest dismembered particles. Particles of the city, pieces of artifacts and disjointed elements of time. Counterintuitively to its name and its claim, the Schwarmwesen is alone. It's mute. It's a swarm that is materializing as a deficiency. It's a wesen without a Schwarm. It's almost as if the being has yet to find its swarm, or the swarm the being is immersed in is the wrong one. It is it is this subjectivity, its own psycho-reality, the being itself, in it, it's lost, it's 
meandering, it's mumbling. Schwammwesen is without, without the ability to behave as an individual, nor is it capable of being as elegantly and profoundly part of a swarm behavior that we as humans know from birds or from fish. It's a paradox, embodied as an identity. A specificity of beingness, which is to explore the very relation of their individual existence to the collective existence, and it's all totally collapsed. So the one-bodied being with the not-one-bodied mind is shipped, or it ships itself, around the planet, unconsciously, along the production lines, the lines of flight of this gigantic techno-social body, moving, body-moving machine, techno-social body-moving machine called tourism. This gigantic machine called trade. The factory that you might know by the name of migration, with its violent displacements that occur in it. Within these complex and cross-linked systems of global circulation of bodies, Schwarmwesen explores those sites in which the catastrophic timing and the special disruptions of millions of beings occurs. Piazza della Signoria in Florence, for example, is the blueprint, a benchmark, a symbol, a sign for a truly global and at the same time hyper-specific local site. But so is the Brandenburg Gate. Any flesh bodies and the identities they carry that are present in these sites are seemingly ripped apart by the velocity of their global circulation. Others are petrified by their lack of legitimate papers and are doomed to remain here, trapped, slowed down to zero movement. For the two instances that I just described, Schwammwesen conjures two interlinked terms. Geopathology and chronostrophy. They both are not specifically defined academic terms, as Schwarmwesen does not know how to write properly beyond or out of its own ruinous bodyscape of their own deficient selfhood. Instead, it mumbles in a form of language that I, as us, call language devices. They do unfold their psycho-real power on the very side and in the moment in which they are transmitted from Schwarmwesen's artificial tongues to its followers. In the Prussian molded, reconstructed symbolic center of Berlin, while maneuvering across Pariser Platz, passing the Fanmeile and these beer bikes. These languages, these language devices remain intertwined to what they mean in Renaissance Florence on Piazza della Signoria. Language weaves those sites through time and space, and it specifies their difference at the same time. Schwarmwesen paradoxically embodies both the interconnection and the difference of these sites and the bodies present. I, as Schwarmwesen, try to remain as unaware as possible of my, as our reason of existence, our mission, our language, my as our languagelessness, language, languagelessness. My as our 
languagelessness, meaning not the ability to speak grammatically correct. Schwammwesen does not have a semiotic lack, but a sociopolitical one. Schwammwesen lacks knowledge, context, aim. It does not have a body in this cosmology. The cosmology of capital, extruding from the West since centuries, colonizing the planet, and on the verge of infecting the universe, knows no outside signs and signifiers anymore. Everything we speak might as well be technological, digital, endo-capital devices that speak us. Comparing myself as Schwarmwesen to any mono-identitist, essentialist or individualist form of subjectivity will render us as I a deficient identity. But I as us might construct our very own beingness, our subject form, or at least to stay with this trouble of translocal hypercirculation of human bodies materially, remain in the catastrophic dysfunctioning of what Schwarmwesen calls our body time or flesh time, remain with the damages that are inflicted by endocapitalist circulation. The threat of metabolic dysfunction, if you step out of capitalist time and space, regimes. These are the decentered signs and symbols of Schwarmwesen's language devices. How do they sound? How do they sound in here? Listen for yourself. In, in potentiality, potentiality this, this is, is also a petri dish, a, petri dish. A, magnifying lens. a magnifying lens. An hourglass of discordant timescales. An hourglass is one of the many epicenters of a catastrophic dismembering forces. Temporal strings, Temporal strings plucked by financialized mobility and pulsed by the world market factory's rhythm, encountering those, those in lithic, in lithic limbo, limbo, preying upon. Heavy, heavy bodies, bodies. Tearing, apart tearing apart flesh and tissue into, into disjointed, disjointed particles, particles, skidding them across the planet, pulverizing any conception of a whole, whole an uneven and combined even and ticking, bodies out of time, bodies interlocking, out of time, time. interlocking and unsynced, delineating fractured time fractured. zones, a toxic imprint, I, I, as us, we I call, we call, chronostrophy. chronostrophy.